video in the church here at Miracle Revival Church for having us again. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who made us a meal. Everything was perfect, wonderful, and we are full to literally overflowing. So thank you for all that you've done for us this week. Thank you for all you adults for coming and bringing people out and for those who called and those who helped us in skits and puppets and everything. You know what? Now the kingdom of God gets built up is when we work together. Work together. We have a common goal. We do it for the glory of God. Souls will be touched and reached. So thank you for everyone who made that possible. We appreciate all you've done for us. Let's stand. Let's bow our heads tonight. Ask the Lord to help us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for a wonderful week we've had. Thank you for every person who's made an effort to be here this week. I pray that you would bless them, draw them closer to you, Lord. We want to see them in heaven one day. And thank you, Lord, that your power will enable us to live for you today. Bless, help, and Lord us tonight. Give the strength, body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name we pray.
but God was with us, the great pilot, and helped us tonight. Every time you come out here. Help! These kids and I are 
your lunch bag. You gonna sit around and eat your peanut butter no. sandwich in front of you? No, Lisa, Captain Carter, I was on the lake, you're over the church, and I stopped in the town. Uh-huh. And there was this guy, and uh -huh. he was selling these bags. He was selling them I, bags. I bought one. Ah, there. And then guess what? These are not It's a silly person born every moment. a goal of person that I can make some money on. Hey, hey, listen, listen to me. What? These aren't just my lunch bags. They're not? Nope. What are they? Guess what? What? He told me that there was a boy in this bag. A bird in the bag? Yeah. Wow. So now he gives me instructions. Instructions? Uh-huh. He said that if I take this bag, Uh-huh.
the next stop we go to the appetizers. Well, I need a, I need a boy helper. And so 
tell the angel, told Paul, everyone's going to be saved. So Paul went to the top of the said, hey, everybody, grab something to eat. Can you imagine not eating for two weeks? They fasted for two weeks because they were so worried and scared. And so Paul said, I want everybody to eat. And all of a sudden, the rain began to slow down. The waves began to get a little calmer. Daylight appeared. And all of a sudden, they saw an island. And they thought, wow, everything's going to be all right. They got closer as it got light. All of a sudden, smack! The boat hit the rocks underneath. They didn't see what happens when a boat hits a bunch of rocks. It sinks right. It breaks apart. And so the boat got big holes in it everywhere. The boat started going down, down, down. The guard said, what are we going to do with the prisoners? And one of them said, let's just kill them all. Said no. Paul said everybody's going to be fine, and so all 270, some almost 300 people. The captain said, "Everyone, grab a piece of board of the ship. Swim to shore if you can, but grab a board, grab a piece." And you know what? Guess how many drowned in the storm? No. Nobody drowned. All 276 that was with Paul. They grabbed a board, they floated to the land, and God protected them. Wow, Captain, then Paul, he was really a man of God. That angel spoke to him and told him not to be afraid, that everyone yes. on board was going to be safe. And when Paul told all the sailors that, I think some of them sailors didn't believe Paul. They didn't. But now they did because it was true. Paul, you really must have heard it from an angel. God must have sent an angel to you to tell you. That's right. And you know what? Your prayers, Paul's prayers saved about 300 people. Wow. You know what? Your prayer, you never know who can get saved of your family, your friends, your neighbor, because you got a burden and said, God, I see their life is making a shipwreck. They're making a bad decision after a bad decision, but God, you can spare them and say to them, you know what? God hears and answers prayer because Paul prayed, took him from stormy seas all the way to safety shore. Right. I'm glad that we're in safety shore tonight instead of them stormy seas. And I'm glad Paul got out of them stormy seas, too. I am, too. I think Scab and Archie's coming out. Come on. 
for sure. But I think you're worried more about what's in that treasure box, Slicker, than the treasure hey, of hey, God's word you in your heart. Me. You're a filthy money grabbing person. I Oh! 
somewhere. You see a key anywhere? It says it right there. I don't see a key. Okay. Does the map give you another clue? Yeah, there is another clue. It says, I trust in the Lord and sing with my whole heart. Trust in the Lord and sing with my whole heart. I wonder where we should go. Where do you, where do you sing so That makes me like it over there. Is it by the piano? Let's go to the piano. Maybe it's by the piano. Go up here and look by the piano. Go this way. And 
then come back here and tuck them. We'll come back, take them out from the rib, and you've got to put them in order on the table. Okay? All right, Skyler. Let's get them to the Well, almost everybody. 
not Matt Corbin. Matt Corbin was an orphan boy, and Matt actually was chopping wood for the Widow Smith. And he wasn't around the, the river because he didn't know what was going on. Matt Corbin, he had taken care of himself for two years. He was only 12 years old when his parents had died in an epidemic, and they got really sick. So Matt, he had to do chores around town for, to be able to take care of himself. Well, Matt was chopping wood, chop, chop, chop. By he was finished, and into town he went. Matt thinks it into town, he was going to Widow Smith's house, and he was going to find his, get his money for chopping the wood. Widow Smith wasn't open. So he thought maybe she was in at the store. So one 